All right, on this channel, we've done a lot of videos on protecting ranges of cells or entire worksheets. So in order to understand what we're going to go through in this video, we'll do a quick history lesson here. And what we've done in the past is, let's say for example, we don't want anyone changing the wages. All right, so we'll highlight column E, go to data and just do protect sheets and ranges. So you can do this, you get a dialog box up here. I'll put a link to a previous video that walks you through these steps and the different ways to set it up. But what this does is this protects who can edit it, not who can see it. So I have a lot of users asking on these videos in the past, basically, how can we provide another level of protection? And they want to have users in this spreadsheet, but they want to completely hide certain data from them. And you may have tried to come down here, left click on this and do hide sheet. Well, don't do that if you're trying to actually hide data from people because they can just go look in the list of all the sheets, see that it's still there and click on it and it comes back. If they have view only access to the spreadsheet, they won't be able to see the hidden sheet. But if they make a copy of the file, they'll be able to see it then. So that's more of an organizational consideration. If you have a lot of sheets here, you can just hide them from view. But if you really want to control who sees certain data, we're going to walk through a scenario here to show you how to separate it. And then once you have it separated, how to bring it into that new sheet and summarize it in a meaningful way. So you have the detail tab. This is what you don't want people to see. And we also have a summary tab here. So we've just created a pivot table to summarize the payroll by quarter. You're okay with everyone seeing this, just not with them seeing the detail. Let's go up and see who has access to this right now. So we'll say it's just me and Michael, but we don't want Michael to be able to see the actual wages and associate them with specific people. So we're going to come on to here, come down, remove access. You have to remember to click save and let's go back up here to make sure of one more thing and that it's the link sharing is off. So in this case, I would have been in trouble. Let, let me make that collapse again. Right now, the link is shared within my organization. So Michael would still be able to see this if he had the link. Let's come here, click on this and make it so it's restricted. Meaning that only the people added at the top here will have access. So left click on done. Now I'm the only person that can see this spreadsheet. But I want Michael to be able to see summary information, right? So I have the summary tab. What we're going to do is pull this data into a completely different file. All right. So I have one started here. I called it payroll summary. It's just a blank spreadsheet, nothing happening in this spreadsheet right now. And if I click on the share button, which you should do to make sure it's only me and I must have these being defaulted to be shared within the organization. I'm going to turn that off in this case for best practice since it's payroll data. Click done. And both of these right now are only me. So in order to allow Michael to see this summary data without having access to the detail, let's go into this. I'm going to call this a destination sheet because this is a one-way link. We're going to use a formula called import range. I've linked to a page with a little more description on import range. That's on a sister site called Sheets Help. And that's a site that I'm working on that has resources for how to use Google Sheets. So I'll leave that link for you. And the first thing this function wants is a spreadsheet URL. And that's the spreadsheet of the source file. Okay, so let's come over back to the source file. We'll click on that. This is the entire URL. You can grab all of this, but you don't need all of it. You really just need this long string of random characters right in the middle in between the slashes. We're going to get that to make the formula a little shorter. So I will do control C to copy that. We'll come back to the import range function and don't forget your quotes. Since this is a string, you need to start it with a quote. And then we're going to paste that spreadsheet key into there and end it with a quote. Now a comma and it wants the range string. So this also needs quotes, which is a bit unusual in spreadsheet functions. So don't forget that. So I started with quote, come through here and let's just grab B4 through C9. So this is a pivot table. This will still live on this worksheet, but we'll individually link to each one of these cells and bring this in. So 
So we'll do B4 to B9. Let's do this. In a second, we'll talk about the limitations of this and why we want to do this a little bit differently. But we'll close this off and hit enter. And the first time it does it, it gives you an error because it can't access that spreadsheet. So when you hover over that, you need to click on allow access. Just do it one time and it will pull everything in. Oh, that's because I made this B4 to B9. Let's make it B4 to C9. Okay, we have this working now. Let's go up and share this spreadsheet just with Michael. So we will click on him. We're going to leave the other setting as restricted, so it's just the two of us. Now Michael can come in here and see exactly what we're seeing, but he still can't see the detail. All right, but one consideration that you need to keep in mind with import range is that you've given this spreadsheet complete access to the payroll detail. So right now it's only accessing the summary tab, but if you were to have a user that got a little bit curious, they could try guessing and do something like, sheet one explanation point well maybe sheet two and try to pull in some detail in that case they guessed the worksheet wrong because i called it detail if they got lucky enough to guess that they would start getting into the detail right so you expand this c maybe to e19 and they start seeing some confidential data. So my solution to this would be to come in here and just make sure that you have a somewhat unique name for the detail. Just the word detail will probably be hard enough to recognize, but you could also just call it detail. Don't look here and that would be enough. I don't think anyone will ever guess that. We'll come back in. Now that breaks that so they won't be able to see the detail. We will go back to the simple cell reference and that'll bring up the summary data from the other file. And if you'd like to learn more about how to create pivot tables, I have a playlist up on the screen right now. Several different videos will walk you through the process. Thanks for watching. It's nice to have you along.